This is the Computer Science Dragon Book, or the Red Dragon Book, Compilers, Principles, Techniques, and Tools by Alfred Aho, Ravi Sethi, and Jeffrey Ullman. The book is really inexpensive, super common. There's another version of this book, another edition, and it's got like this like fierce red dragon. Look, it looks really crazy. But it's really expensive, so I don't own that copy. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's got like it looks really it's like really tough looking. Whereas this is more like '80s looking, really cool cover, right? So, as a collector of math books and computer science books and physics books, and I even collect some other types of books, this is a collectible. Even though um, it's not really rare or anything, but still one of those books that's worth owning as a collector. Copy's in pretty good condition. Let's open it up. Alfred Aho, AT&T Bell Laboratories, Ravi Sethi, AT&T Bell Laboratories, and then Jeffrey Ullman, Stanford University. Wow. So, you know, a lot of stuff. Stanford's an awesome school, by the way. I mean, everyone knows Stanford. And AT&T Bell Laboratories, a lot of stuff uh, was done there. I was reading about it, AT&T Bell Laboratories, the other day, uh, just for fun. And um, they were saying that some people believe that there's nothing really today that really compares to AT&T Bell Labs. Like that's, you know, like the old AT&T Bell Labs. Like it doesn't, nothing is not the way it used to be or, or there's nothing today that compares to it. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing here. So um, reprinted with corrections, March 88. Copyright 86 Bell Telephone Labs. Yeah, all I know is that uh, for a fact, I know that AT&T Bell Labs, a lot of really good stuff came out of there. A lot of computing stuff. And, you know, so it's cool when you have a, a book written by people who work there. Here's a quick look at the contents. I'm going to try to keep this video short. Introduction to compiling. Simple one-pass compiler. Lexical analysis. Syntax analysis, syntax directed translation, type checking, runtime environments, intermediate code generation, code generation, and code optimization. It's a thick book. This is a thick book and it's heavy. And here we have want to write a compiler, a look at some compilers, and then a compiler project. And I'm just going to give it a whiff here because I have to. I just have to smell it. Ah, oh, ah, oh, my copy smells really clean, actually. You can see here someone started with this book with a lot of motivation. It's Introduction to Compiling. It talks about compilers. Simply stated, a compiler is a program that reads a program written in one language, the source language, and translates it into an equivalent program in another language, the target language. See figure 1.1. So you have... Your source program going into the compiler gives you your target program, and then there's error messages come out. A compiler. Says, At first glance, the variety of compilers may be overwhelming. There are thousands of source languages, ranging from traditional programming languages such as Fortran and Pascal, to specialized languages that have arisen in virtually every area of computer application. Interesting. Target languages are equally as varied. A target language may be another programming language or the machine language of any computer between a microprocessor and a, I have to keep reading, we have to keep reading, and a supercomputer. Cool. More highlighting here. Let's see if we can see where the highlighting ends. That's always an indication of how devoted the previous owner was. Uh, I don't, oh, highlighting, I, I'm writing. I don't write in my books uh, anymore. Um, you know, I feel like the more I collect books, the more serious a collector I become. I'm pretty obsessed with with math books. This being a computer science book, though, is still really cool. And let's keep looking. I think I think the highlighting might be done. Yeah, so they got into it. Maybe they bought it for a course or something, and they dropped the course, or maybe they just lost motivation. Um, so this, this copy is in really, really clean condition. Really clean condition. So classic book. Uh, I just wanted to just show it to you and talk about it a little bit and just show you What's in it? Intermediate languages. There's syntax trees and postfix notation introduced in sections 5.2 and 2.3, respectively, are two kinds of intermediate representations. A third, called 
three address code will be used in this chapter. Cool. Types of three address statements. So all kinds of stuff that you've probably never heard of, uh, or maybe you have, right? Maybe you have. If you've used this book, I want to know, right? Let me know. Leave a comment um, if you know about this book or if you've heard about it. Um, this book, someone actually mentioned this book. Uh, I think a few people mentioned it in the comments. Um, and it's it's a famous book. It's called Compilers, Principles, Techniques, and Tools by Aho Sethian Ullman. And I'll try to uh, remember, if I remember, to leave a link in the description to this book because it's not expensive at all. Very common book. Uh, but the, the other version, there's a version that has... Uh, like a really fierce looking red dragon on, on the cover. Um, that version um, is, is uh, you know, a lot more, a lot more money. Cool. By the way, someone asked about these, uh, these little holders. I'll, I'll just mention it really quick. Uh, they said, you keep making videos and you, you keep having these Magic the Gathering symbols, but you don't explain your relationship. So I could talk about Magic the Gathering all day. So let me just, let me just mention one thing. So I started playing Magic the Gathering in in the early, uh, not in the early, yeah, early 90s. Yeah, early when it came out. I started during the revised edition, so if you know what that is. So Magic the Gathering is a card game, for those who don't, that don't know. And these symbols, these are the mana symbols from Magic the Gathering. This one's not a mana symbol. This is like the M from Magic the Gathering. By the way, you know what's really cool about Magic the Gathering? Um, it was created by a, a mathematician, right? It was a mathematician. He has a PhD in mathematics. Richard Garfield uh, he's a PhD mathematician, and he created uh, Magic the Gathering. That makes it extra cool. But I started playing in the early 90s, and um, you know, I sold Magic cards on eBay uh, many, many years ago. I would buy and sell, and I had a really impressive collection at one point. And I sold them, and um, so I have some cards left, but all my high-dollar cards are, you know, I still have some high-dollar cards, but they're pretty much gone. You know, I don't have a time walk anymore and stuff like that. So, or any moxes. I used to have a few moxes. Never had the Black Lotus. Um, I knew a guy who bought a Black Lotus for sixty dollars through a mail order magazine in nineteen ninety. I want to say it was ninety three or ninety four. Yeah, around then. Good stuff. Anyways, I'm a collector mainly. I no longer play. But Magic the Gathering, cool game. Uh, I would play. I just don't really have any uh, friends that play <laughs> so so none of my friends play the few friends i have so compilers principles techniques and tools now i have friends but none of them really play uh magic the red dragon book compilers principles and techniques so let me know what you think if you've used this book you think about it and if you play magic let me know i'm curious if anyone even knows uh, what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure Magic is still pretty popular uh, because the cards, like the old cards are really expensive, but I don't know how many people actually still play. So yeah. Anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it was not meant to be this long. Until next time, good luck and take care.